Today, I'd like to talk about our Traction Field mobile app, a convenient, easy to use, independent app for running your field boundaries, as well as doing your soil sampling. It is currently available for the iPhone and iPad devices, and it's designed for the person who wants to do their own soil sampling or needs an independent app that can export out a universal format for upload into other software programs. But keep in mind, this program also has functionality that ties in seamlessly and syncs nicely with our Traction Agronomy platform. So let's get into the Traction Field app. So as you can see here from the screen, I'm looking at the Traction Field menu options. And from our home screen, you can see a lot of the status of the app. So the sync status for loading that data back to Traction Field. So that will give you an idea of, of um, when that's ready to go. So green, uh, it will turn yellow or red if there's an issue and also tell you what those issues are. Then we get into our farms and fields. So this is where we're gonna build out our grower farm and field tree, as well as do our boundary work. Then we have pause jobs, cause let's face it, when we're out in the field, sometimes that rain comes up on us and we need to pause what we're currently doing and come back at a later date. So this app does a great job of being able to pause that job and then resume it once we're able to get back into the field. And then finally collecting our soil samples. So let's get into this a little bit further and I'm gonna go out to our menu because we can also do this functionality right here from the menu. So if I tap on my farms and fields, I get a list of my growers. I wanna go into a particular grower. Let's say I wanna also see a map of that grower's fields. So down here in the lower left corner, I tap on that map icon and it zooms right into my grower's field so I can see all his fields. If I want more information about a particular field, I'm gonna tap on a field. And then I can also get directions to the field. So in the upper right corner, you see that directions to field icon. If I need to uh, have Apple Maps or something like that, tell me directions to the field, I can use that. But then I've also got information on this field. So you can see here, I've got some target sample layers and sample events that are coming from my Traction Agronomy platform that I can use for sampling. But I want to focus on the field itself. So down here in the lower left-hand corner, I've got the edit button. So if I want to adjust this boundary, let's say those uh, internal boundaries no longer exist, I can quickly delete those out right here in the app. Or if I want to rerun this boundary completely, maybe a fence line has changed, something like that, I can easily tap on that boundary, delete it, and rerun the boundary right here in the app. And then down in the lower right corner, I can easily start sampling from here. In the center, we talked about some of that independence with this app. So we've got this sharing function and you're gonna see this at various places throughout the app, but I can send a zip shapefile of the boundary for this field through text, email, or a shared drive just by using the sharing functionality. So let's go out. And then we've got our sample events. So if I tap on my sample events, this screen tells me, okay, I've got one job that's currently paused waiting for me to resume it. And I've also got some uh, sample events that I've completed. If I wanna start a new sample event, I would tap on this plus function. And this screen is going to show the field that I'm closest to right at the top. So I'm closest to my home farm and that's showing up in that green banner. If I needed to bring up a different field, I can easily search for that field. I'm gonna type in my field 47, it pops up. I can tap on that and it's gonna get that field ready for my sampling. And you see, we've got different sampling options available for you. We've got this free hand, so I can manually place points throughout the field. I would just mark the sample at the location that I'm at, and it will geospatially place a point at that location. With our Traction Agronomy platform, we could do the target samples, the zone, and the resample. So target samples is going to be a history of my historic sites, and I want to keep using those points. 
I could upload those into Traction Agronomy and have those available for my sampling. If I have historic zones that I want to continue using, I can load those into Traction and have those available for sampling or the resample. So if I've uploaded historic soil test results and I want to continue using that geometry, I can use the resample method. And that would tell me, okay, I've got these sample events available for me to choose from to continue and turn it into a new sample event for me to sample. And then also for my results to come back in for the current year. Let's take a look at our zones real quick. I need to go out to a different field in that case. So for my home farm, I've got a zone layer available, so it's there. I can do zone sampling. What it does is it's gonna show me where I'm currently at. It makes that zone that I'm located in red. Once I'm ready to uh, mark a point, it turns it gray. And then I can move on to the next zone. So it shows me as I'm progressing through the field. You can also see up in the center, it shows us how many zones we've sampled and how many we have left to sample. Let's talk about the grid functionality. So if I go back to my field 47, I talked about independence. Maybe I want to start a new grid right there in the field. I don't have any historic data. I want to start new. I can tap on the grid. And in this case, I can set it up the way I want it. So if I want to do a five acre grid, maybe I want to do a two and a half acre grid, I can tap on that area up in the corner and I can adjust that if I want. I like the five acre grids for this field, so I'm going to leave that. Then down below in this lower left corner, I've got tools. I can adjust my grid based on what I need. So the first button that's active, that's going to allow me to pan up, down, right, left, and then I've got a rotate button that would allow me to move this and adjust it in line with a boundary or, or you know, however I want that set up in the field. And then finally close that out. I've got the grid the way I want it, so I tap on next, and it's going to set my sample points. Now at this point, I've also got some sampling options. We have sampling options in the zones as well. Uh, to address the target labels. If I don't like the way it's numbered currently, I can always turn off those target labels. And that way, if I'm starting from a different end of the field and that's gonna be my number one point and I want it to start numbering from there, I can easily turn off those target labels to start doing that. And I can start at the number one or I can adjust that too. I can tap in there and, and make changes to that if I don't wanna start at the number one. And then I've got this max distance from target. Right now it's set to 20 feet. It, I can change that as well. And what that does is if at some point I need to move one of my historic sites or I need, you know, I can't sample, maybe there's a wet hole there or something and I need to make an adjustment, that gives me some options to be able to then adjust that. So I tap on the apply and you can see that our labels have disappeared. I can then start in on sampling, get that ready to go. Once I've done my sampling, you do also have some edit options available to you as you're doing that. And then when you're finished, you just tap on that pause icon. It gives me options to finish the event, pause the event, discard the event, or cancel. I'm gonna discard that. But if I look at one that I've previously sampled coming in here, I do have a sharing function. Once that's completed, you get that sharing function again, where I can send now not only the boundary file, but a zip shape file also of points or zones, depending on which way I sampled, through a text message, email, or a shared drive to my customer or my trusted advisor. Other thing I want to point out is you notice on the right hand side, we also have these beakers in here. And so that lets me know that I've got soil test results. So for me as a grower, that's very helpful. I can tell that, okay, my lab results have come back from the lab and I can take a look right here on, the, on my device, take a look at those results. Or if I'm a trusted advisor, I can start having conversation with a grower right there in the field to talk about those results. So as we look at that, I tap up here in the right corner on this ID. And let's say I wanna look at my P results. 
Um, so it interpolates a map and I can zoom in on this and take a look at my results. But if I want to see, okay, let's take a look at this one point and get all the results. I just tap on that point and I get all the results and I can scroll through those results to see exactly what's going on for that particular point. And again, we've got that sharing function down below so I could share those out with my customer or my trusted advisor. So it asks, do I want to include or don't include? So in this case, I want to include, and there we go. We can share those out in a zip shape file as well.